Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be checking out the code P0752 on this 19, sorry, 2001 Chevy Tahoe transmission. It's a 4060E series. Uh, should be very similar to many years makes and models. If this video does help you, please make sure you comment below with the year make and model and engine size that this diagnosis helps you with. We're going to be looking at the shift solenoid A and the circuit to it. So in the video, we are going to check continuity and resistance in your solenoid and for continuity in your harness and also as well check your shift valves. The same procedure could be done on shift B if shift solenoid B if you have an issue with that one. While you're watching, please make sure you like while you're watching, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And let's get going. We're gonna go ahead and check the solenoid itself for resistance and uh, continuity. We'll check the wiring harness for continuity. Make sure it's actually letting command flow from the computer. And then check the shift valves in your bores in the manifold itself. If you don't find the problem while you're doing this diagnosis, you might have a wiring harness issue or a traction control, mo sorry, traction, transmission control module issue. Also, if you have dirty fluid uh, or other mechanical failures in the vehicle, you can get this code as a false code. The computer just doesn't know what's going on because it can't control it. So if your pump's going mad or you have low pressure, it could get this code as well. So this isn't a definite for sure this is what it is, but this is a quick little easy diagnosis just to check your solenoids. So let's go ahead and get started. I get a lot of hits, views, questions about these shift solenoids, when they go bad, what to do, how to replace them, uh, etc. These shift solenoids do go bad, but not as often as most people think and end up replacing these and wasting your money. If you do end up buying them or want to buy them, make sure you replace them with AC Delco uh, shift solenoids. You'll have problems, trust me. Uh, and there will be a link in the description below if you need to buy them and if you buy them through there It shoots me a couple bucks too. So uh, also like subscribe and share while we're doing this So if you suspect your shift solenoid is bad Don't just run off and buy new ones and replace them try to test them first if you have the time and the capabilities for the abilities uh, Your one two accumulators could be bad uh, You could have stuck shift valves. You could have more problems. So let's verify that these are bad real fast First, I'm gonna electronically disconnect them from the wiring harness. There we go. We're gonna do a clicking test to see if uh, nine volts opens at first. That'll be the first test. So nine volt battery you'll need. You're gonna need some uh, test leads. Let's go ahead and pick We'll use red and green. Doesn't matter which side. You might have to probe yours from uh, your harness side. I don't know if they all have these prongs, but you could access through the harness side too. It's a little bit more difficult, but uh, for video's sake, this we'll do the easy route. Red and blue. Going to just connect it to the nine volt battery doesn't matter positive or negative and you just listen for a clicking sound try that one more time I'll get you a little bit closer perfect they both pass the 9 volt battery test if you need leads, those, or I'll have a link in the description below to buy those, probably cheaply. Um, that. Next, you're going to need a DVOM. We're going to check the ohms of resistance on your connections. Get your mo uh, meter to ohms of resistance. Set it so you can see it, but not the other way. Hopefully, you can see that. Got my test leads. Let's see what we come up with. 21.5. The specifications of ohms of resistance on these shift solenoids is 20 to 30 ohms. So this one is good. Most of them test in the lower 20s. 
I would say more specifically the 20 to 25 ohm range of resistance is better, but specification from what I've seen is 20 to 30. I will go a little more specific and recommend 20 to 25. Let's test this next one. Twenty one point seven. Twenty one point seven ohms of resistance. This transmission is just for video sake. You're going to push in. Oh. Well, you're not going to push in on this one. Pretty hard to see on that one. All I did was lift this straight out of the hole. You can see. Just come straight up. Shift solenoid comes right out, hopefully. Check your seal right here. Now we want to shimmy the shift valve out. Shimmy your shift valve out. Different models are going to have different shift valves, so just make sure that what you take out, you put it back in the same position. This one's got a short shift valve. And then, no, I then. There's your longer valve. Careful not to damage anything. You want to inspect your valve for any debris, such as like uh, like looking like dust particles or anything like that, which, which will be metal chunks. Uh, if you are looking good and you want to just clean it off, just get some mineral spirits, clean it off with mineral spirits, and put it back in the hole. Just make sure you put it back in the same way you found it. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is a, a transmission I'm going to put back in a truck like this. So you could put some uh, mineral spirits on those shift valves. So you could put some uh, assembly lube lightly on those just to get them to slide in. Make sure they're free inside there when you put them back in. You don't want them to be hampered in any way from moving inside your uh, the shift valve bores. This one's going to be a little bit different. It's spring-loaded. Let's go ahead and see if I can get you a good view. So that one got a little bit of a spring to it in the spacer. This one has a spacer, not all models are gonna be the same way. Now this one's gonna have a spring on it. Jesus.
Maybe not. <laughs> Make sure you don't have any debris on your shift valves themselves. Make sure your spring is not broke. Both ends are nice and flat, which they are. Put some assembly lube on it, nice and smooth on it. Don't put too much assembly lube or uh, mineral spirits that you would probably prefer in this situation. Put it back. Put your spacer. And then was it pushed in all the way? There we go. And then reconnect your harness.